Hey gang, Ross Brand here for LivestreamUniverse.com. Welcome to Livestream Stars. Uh, we're doing Livestream Stars twice a week in August. So, uh, you know, our usual time, 7 p.m. Eastern on Monday night. But this is a Thursday night edition. We're doing Thursday night shows as well. So welcome to Livestream Stars. It's the show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high-quality content across live stream platforms and my guest tonight is brian wallace we're going to be talking all about south by southwest everything you need to know uh if you're going to attend the conference if you're actually applying to speak uh this is an opportunity to ask brian some questions as well if you can do anything at the last minute for your uh campaign and in fact uh myself coach jenny Karen Graves and Monique Johnson have a panel proposal in. The voting is going on right now. We would love for you to vote for us, and you can do that by going to LivestreamUniverse.com slash SXSW, LivestreamUniverse.com slash SXSW. Now let's get to Brian Wallace. So great to have you here, Brian. Uh, he's Brian is, for those that don't know, I know a lot of people already know you. Brian is the founder of Now Sourcing, uh, nowsourcing.com, at Now Sourcing on social. They're an industry leader in infographic design. They provide research, design, and promotion of infographics, as well as what's next in the world of infographics, something we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show, and also video infographics, kinetic typography, and interactive infographics. Brian, of course, is a frequent speaker, lecturer, and mentor coming from a technology management background. He understands the pressure points, society at large, uh, that keeps people clicking and coming back for more online. Uh, Brian runs the South by Southwest 2018 panel planning Facebook group. I'm a member. It's a good group. You got to join that if you're interested in uh, South by Southwest, and in particular, if you're interested in in speaking at South by Southwest. And Brian also revealed the first ever virtual reality infographic at South by Southwest in 2017. But more importantly, he's been a regular attendee of the conference. He's been a speaker at the conference for several years. And it's so great to have you on, Brian, and, and to see you again. We, we met up recently in New York mm -hmm. City. So this, is, this is awesome. Yes, indeed. And thank you so much for having me on the show, Ross. And <clears throat> it looks like my work here is done. Quite an intro there. <laughs> I guess I have to come up with a lot to follow up with that. So. Well, in, in, in that note, uh, we'll be signing off. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. So uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your experience with South by Southwest and how you became you know, so passionate about this event and sharing it with other people. Sure. So great question. I'm asked that quite a bit since I've been around there. Uh, some of the cool kids, hey, Travis, a lot of the cool kids kind of came in early on at South by. They don't go anymore. A lot of people say it's overblown and all that kind of stuff. And I say, no, actually, you probably want to have corporate sponsors. So it continues on. I mean, it does a ton of business for the economy. And a thing that I like to tell people, a main reason why I think it's still very relevant in today's world and why I keep going is I could make a conscious decision to fly to 30 different cities, to all sorts of places all over the map to see everybody. Or I could just go to this one place where everybody's there at the same time. So uh, my company now sourcing actually just turns 12 this month. And before we did infographics only, we were a social media agency. So I've been going to this before we even started doing infographics, and this was just the place to be. This was if you really wanted to be on not just a national, but on a world stage to see everything that's going on and to you know really connect with people because they are just people. It's not right. that you can't approach them. It's just like, hey, whoever you know you're scared of getting to know, people are approachable. It's it's not Hollywood, it's the internet, which is weird, but that's, right. what, <laughs> that's what we live in. So I just think it's such a, a wonderful spot to be in, and it really just gets you a, a chip at the table, if you will. And this will be my, I believe, ninth out of the last 10 years going. Now, it's not Hollywood, but there are some heavy hitters there. There are some world-known figures. Presidents have spoken there, you know, movie stars. Mm -hmm bands you know um right and and sometimes it's tough to explain to people exactly what south by southwest is is it a tech conference is it a marketing conference is it a media conference is it all of the above how would you you had to sum it up in like a couple of words sum up what south by southwest is 
Sure. It's all of the above. It's almost like the modern day World Fair. So if we back up a second and go and start at the beginning, I think it was, I think the year was 1987 when they first conceived this. They thought they were going to have 75 people and they had hundreds of people. So over the years, it's become, it started actually as a music conference, small music conference. Later on, they added now they have a total of three tracks. They have interactive, which is the thing that you and I are applying to speak at. They have film, so there is Hollywood. It's just not really the interactive track. Although in recent years, they are converging when we talk about virtual reality and video and all that kind of stuff. And then there's also music, which is the final week. So they are completely different audiences though. They really are. So. Aside from that, you also have St. Patrick's Day and spring break with a lot of universities that are right around there in Austin. So it's basically just this massive festival of just basically a, hundred, a few hundred thousand people just to send on the city. It's kind of madness. And I think all the locals kind of hate it because it's just like everybody's just like Airbnbs out their house and just right, doesn't right. want to get stuck in gridlock and all that. So, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I've heard that some people who, well, let's just say they go as much for the party that's going on around it, as you said, uh, right. spring break and, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day and just a big gathering of people from all over the country and, and even all over the world. Um, so that's a big part of it, too, is all the other stuff going on besides the panels and speeches and uh, networking, uh, although it's kind of part of networking, depending on what your goals are there. But there's a whole social life going on. There's a whole interesting uh, city there to Austin, Texas. Um, talk about like what you like about the setting and what you enjoy doing during, during the week when it's not about going to the conferences and speaking and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So I don't really spend a ton of time seeing every session. I mm -hmm. think that there's, you can really suffer from session overload and sometimes sessions get really crowded. So you might stand in a line for a few hours and I'm not going to stand in a line for a few hours as there's all this kind of stuff to do. There's beautiful nature walks. Um, there is on the Congress Street Bridge is actually where a lot of bats migrate. And you can see, like, I think it's like hundreds of thousands of bats come out from under the bridge at sunset, depending on how warm it is during the year. So you know, there's hot springs, there's parks, there's nature trails. And I feel like as much as everybody's just sitting there looking down at their phone and looking up once in a while to having their brain meltdown, they kind of get lost in the scene. So I always like to unplug for part of it. There are definitely some great places to go. So uh, Brian Solis has a great calm before the storm party. So basically the day before everything starts getting crazy. So I guess that's Thursday night. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet uh, Jay has a great bat picture. That's awesome. It, it's massive swarming bats. If you um, have a fear of bats, just go on the top of the bridge and they'll swarm around your head. I don't personally recommend it, but, you know, whatever you're into. So, yeah, I mean, I like that party. I like going to different lounges. Parties are good, but sometimes they're overwhelming and you can't hear the other person. So right. I think serendipity plays a role. The trade show is great. The panels are great. I mean, there's so much to do. There's all sorts of virtual reality kinds of things. And it's not just the convention center. It's really just miles around. There's all sorts of things going on. Basically, every musical act you could possibly like is probably playing at South by Southwest. Right, so right. it's such an experience. And one of my favorite things, honestly, is internet friends that you never get to meet in real life mm. after years and years it's like here they are you know either they're living in austin or they're coming for south by but it's become a pretty expensive kind of a venture so wow. if you are going to speak that certainly helps defray some of the costs the hotel scene is insanely expensive they jack things up usually twice or three times the price. Wow. So South by Southwest during these couple of weeks runs all housing around there. And you don't want to get stuck at the airport and being, a, you know, an hour away from the action because every moment counts when you're at this thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, just want to welcome some people here. Uh, Travis Barker is here. Marietta is here. Barb is here. Jay Garrett is here. Our good friend Michael A. Campbell is here. And uh, if I didn't mention you, please do throw a comment in the chat so we know you're here. That's how we can tell who is here. And if you could share this out, we would love to let people know that we have Brian on and we're talking about South by Southwest and more, of course. And Jay Garrett shared a cool 
Instagram pic of uh, Bat. So uh, if you're watching in the chat, you can click on that. Nice. Open it up in a different browser so you can still hear us and take take a look at that. Um, so tell us about what, what you're going for this year. Um, I guess I guess every year is, is the panel picker uh, and you've got to submit a proposal and then get some votes and, and impress the committee and all that. So first, before we get into the, the hows and whys and all that, tell us, sure. tell us what you're going for and how people can support you. Sure. Absolutely. So I don't really go to lots of conferences anymore because I have a large family and I have an agency. So I have a lot of responsibilities that, and between that and I travel for work, I don't really have so much time to always go to lots of conferences. So lately, I'm pretty selective over the last few years on what kinds of conferences I go to. This is my can't miss kind of conference because like I said, it's the equivalent of going to several dozen different little conferences, but it's the amplification effect, if you think about it, is different because rather than going to 30 small things, everyone is there. So you can sit there and talk to neuroscientists and farmers and you know, startup founders and people that run Facebook. I mean, whatever it is, everybody just gets together and has a good time. So it, there's very few things that are really like this where a lot of special things happen. And from a social perspective, I mean, you and I would not be live streaming right now if it wasn't for things like this. It was the birthplace right. of Twitter, Meerkat, all these different things. Foursquare got its start out there. Some of these things sound like they're sort of dead, but the precursors to all of the stack of internet infrastructure. I remember, I think the first or second year that I went, it was the first time that, you know, everybody had these iPhones and AT&T was the only thing running it. They crashed the AT&T grid. Wow. That's how bad it was. They had to bring in like all this extra equipment because AT&T and iPhones like never had such a, a flux of everybody hitting the network at once. Right. So that's the kind of stuff that this can do. It's amplification has worldwide ramifications. Yeah. And you know, you, you mentioned something that's, that's really, um, yeah. Well, wow, it, it's really not that long ago, even though it, it seems like it, because those of us close to live streaming and social media obviously uh, have gone through a lot of changes since then. But oh, yeah. it was 20, what was it, 2015 uh, when Meerkat launched or took off and yep. kind of became the thing at South by Southwest. And that's that was sort of people's first taste of of live streaming. And then it wasn't long after that till Periscope launched. And then a few months later, Blab launched. And, and you know, now two of the three are no longer uh, a factor. And along came Facebook Live, which is now, you know, perhaps the dominant live place to go live. Um, Periscope and Twitter video are still going strong. There's YouTube and there's a lot of other platforms like Be Live that we're using that helps you get on Facebook Live and bring comments in. And then there's other niche platforms that, you know, might have once been called webinar platforms or things like that, but now they're hosting talk shows and interviews and, and whatever. So um, do you have any thoughts on like what could be the breakout, I don't know, app or genre or what, what, what's going to be, uh, you know, the new thing this year? Sure. It's hard to say. I think a lot of people are going to talk about technology's role in politics. I think everybody's really interested in how all that sort of stuff is playing out in governance. I think that there's a lot at stake in the virtual reality and augmented reality world. A lot of people are talking about live streaming. So I think those are some of the big things that we're going to see, which sort of started coming around last year. There were a lot of different panels that were focused on these different things. So that's what I'm expecting to see. And tell us... Um as I come back and now we're here, we were both are. Uh, so tell us, how can we support you in, in both your group and, and in, in getting votes and stuff like that? How can, what can we do to support you? Sure. So I have a belief that a lot of people want to do more, you know, they want to be bigger and they're just watching everybody and they have the imposter syndrome or the Kirk Dunner effect or whatever. Right. And it holds them back and they think that they have to be perfect and everything has to be just right. And then we have to spell check it and sit on it and revise it 20 million times. And most people are afraid to act real artistship. That's mm -hmm. what it comes down to. So the reason that I created the group right before the deadline is because I thought that a lot of people just didn't have the balls to step up and do it. <laughs> right, I think right. we probably got a few dozen, honestly. 
extra mm-hmm. submissions to the panels as a result of me just kind of gently nudging a lot of my friends and entrepreneurs and startup people and social people. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm not good enough. How I don't know how to do it. Excuse A, B, C, X, Y, Z. I don't know when the deadline is. It's like, you want me to Google that for you? Come on. So a lot of people just <laughs> need inspiration for that final kick in the pants to just get it over the mark. So if you were watching the group, I was adding people individually and then it just started rolling, right? A lot of other people just started coming in, friends of friends would tag and all of that. Um, we did a couple of live streams within the group to just kind of give people the last mm-hmm. push over, asking everybody, you know, maybe you had a good idea, but you didn't know what panelists to get. So we made a lot of connections. People from all over the world met for the first time in that group, which is now uh, just shy of 200 people with not a lot of effort. Like we didn't put, right. you know, marketing spend to this or anything. A lot of people are just joining on their own and we're selective too. We're not just letting everybody in. It's just, it has to be people who are relevant who truly want to make this a better spot. Right, right. So what are some of the factors that go into who gets selected? People have now submitted their proposals. Proposals are in. The voting's underway. Um, right. how, how do they decide who gets picked? So it's a three-part selection process, and we can post links in the show notes. So part of it is just all of the social voting. Part right. of it is there's an actual board, and then there's some sort of other South by Southwest selection process. So part of it just has to do with reading the rules for crying out loud. Did right. everybody who's watching this broadcast watch the video? Did you read all the instructions? So for instance, did you submit a video? Because they want to see how you speak to people. They're watching if you stutter, if you're camera shy, if you say, um, uh, if you can't say something polished, if you're not topically relevant, if you're giving over the key trends, but they're from 2012, they're looking for all these things. They wanna see you as a person. They wanna see how you've interacted with crowds. You have to get something that's a catchy title. You have to get something that I think really stands out in terms of panel complexity, diversity. They're looking at all these things very carefully. I personally went in for a mentorship session, which is kind of me wimping out, but also it's just me really knowing that I'm busy day and night. I, that week that I'm at South by Southwest for eight days, I work harder than any other week during the year. People wow. say, what's your number one tip for South by Southwest? I'm like, train like you're going to run a marathon because you're going <laughs> to, right? I mean, it's like you will be exhausted. So it is just an endurance festival. We also spend a lot of time and money. There's, believe it or not, a very large trade show at the event that gets something between, I think, 60, 70,000 people. So we, for the last four years, have had a very large trade show booth. A lot of people come to us. They know that we're going to have cool swag. We build our booth from scratch. So a lot of people like to come and see that. And that actually brings me to an important point. For anybody, regardless of whether or not you you submitted something to speak, you get in, you don't get in, you're just going to check it out, you're ready to make a big investment, whatever it is you're going to do, you really need to think that one of the most valuable things to do there to think about is time and focus, right? Because everybody's brains are scrambled. Everybody's looking at the lanyard. They're looking to see, oh, is Mark Zuckerberg here? Is Scoble here? Whoever it is, and you're just looking around, oh, you know, squirrel, I want to go talk to the most important person in the room. That's disgusting, by the way. Like, talk to the person that's in front of you, right? I mean, people right. don't know how to network. And it, that's a whole other subject which we could get back into. But time and focus is all you have on this earth, but specifically speaking at South by Southwest. So for me, I spend a lot of time at the booth. So people, you know, it's like, if you think you're going to like grab coffee, come on, you know, the Starbucks is like the line around the corner for a mile. Where are you going to meet people practically? Pick a lounge, pick a spot. You know, you really need to be methodical in the way you're thinking about this overloaded city that is not prepared for you and thousands of your cohorts sending in sipping lattes, right? Right, so right. It's definitely food for thought. So we're talking with Brian Wallace of Now Sourcing, talking about South by Southwest. We're going to talk uh, also to him in a little bit about infographics as he runs one of the premier infographic design companies in the nation. And welcome, Fernando. Welcome, Alberto. Hey, everybody, please do share this out. Let people know that uh, Brian is here. He's got a wealth of knowledge about South by Southwest. Um, it, it was insightful what you said about, you know, so many people not not following the rules, not not absorbing the information that's out there that can help you uh, polish up your presentation, so to speak, so that when you're up there for the voting, you attract not only the attention 
of uh, people who can vote, but the the committee and and what is what is like when they look at it? Are are they looking at votes the like the aggregate number of votes? Are they looking at um, comments and support? Are they are they looking at what what your social media presence is? What is it? What is it? What else are they looking at that? You, you might have some sort of uh, ability to influence or not influence, right? <laughs> yeah, I think they're watching everything that you're doing and saying pretty closely. So if mm-hmm. you look at, and we're talking about the panel picker stuff here, everybody. Right. So there's a lot of different elements of that page. So if you look at it, there's comments on the page, and I think that those are important. I think that they're looking to see if you're just like a spammer <laughs> and everybody's just like, hello, sir, I like your panel. I, you know, they're reading to see the not just the quantity, but the quality of what people are saying and talking about. I think it's important to continuously socially share it. So if you notice on the bottom to middle left, you've got <clears throat> Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn social sharing buttons. So you right. should be doing that. You should be encouraging your communities and audiences to be doing stuff like that. So I think all of these things are super important. And it's too late to add to that, but mm-hmm. complete the profile, just like any other social network. If you were filling out Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, you wouldn't have no avatar, right? So if it says show supporting material, show the material. If mm-hmm. it says, what are some questions you're going to solve? Put that in there. I think right. a lot of people don't have a good gauge on what kind of panel they should submit. Should it be solo, panel, mentor, workshop? There's all the meetup, they're adding different ones. And then I think also the complexity of it is important. So I personally like to always set it for beginner because I think that will attract more people that I think could use the help. Right. Now, they have those social sharing buttons. Does Mm -hmm. it matter whether you share using those buttons or you just share uh, within, say, Twitter or LinkedIn? So that is a good question. I think, and all social buttons operate a little differently. Sometimes they don't always work perfectly. Sometimes they don't work at all. Um, a, so- a true social button should pick it up regardless of where you've shared it from. But I guess the way to be sure is to share it from the buttons, right? Right, right. I guess, sure I, 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 thing. No, it's good that you mentioned I hadn't thought about that because I figured if I share it, then I can write you know, obviously, you, you probably have the chance to edit it and whatever, but it's easier to sure. tag people who are on your panel and stuff like that if you do it right within the the different apps. Um, and so when it comes to actually attending the event, and you mentioned there's three tracks, is yeah. it that you uh, basically um, – pick a track and that's where you're going to spend most of your time or are there events that are open regardless of which track you're on that you can say I can cross over and go check that out because it's just kind of fun or interesting or you know maybe it relates to my business in some way sure and that's a really good and important question so I would advise everybody and again we can put all this in the show links later to take a look at the different badges that are available Mm -hmm. so there's things that you can buy a badge which is platinum that covers everything gold which covers part of it and then there's the specific track so if you only let's say wanted to go for music again probably outside of the scope of our listeners here you could go get music if you just wanted to go for film same thing I would say everybody who is watching this, that this broadcast is relevant to, for sure at least wants to go to interactive. If you want to get some fancier stuff, and I'm sorry, I think they actually just killed gold this year, so whatever. So you might consider getting platinum if you want to just go and see everything. Also keep in mind there's a great underground scene. There, I think a lot of like the older timer, not old people, but like old time people, veterans who've been going to this for a long time, I think it's like a game that like a lot of people want to go badgeless, either because you don't want to spend the money or just to see what kinds of things you could do. So there's plenty of events and parties not official South by Southwest stuff, of course, but there's just a lot of stuff going on, lots and lots of stuff that you don't actually need a badge to get into. Also and keep is that right. stuff like invite only or is it, you know, posted somewhere? Is there like uh, an underground website that isn't really that underground where you can you can find out where like – all there's the side a, events are and stuff. I don't even know where to begin with this one. This could be the entire <laughs> broadcast. I mean, there's there's endless resources. Um, I think we have a, a common friend, Angelique, actually runs a good Facebook group that talks about South by Southwest party invites. So that's got over a thousand people in it. It's been active the last two years. Um, and then lots of people who are hosting parties, hear about parties, hear about RSVPs, uh, like to put that in. There's different Slack channels. There's right. Google spreadsheets. Endless amounts of things. There's an app called RSVPster, which allegedly registers you for everything. I've never tried it personally. 
there's a wealth of resources. There's guides that people put out of all sorts of happenings. South by Southwest has an app, has mobile apps that shows you everything going on. Lots of directions to go with. We spend, my organization spends months planning everything to a T to figure out what we're going to do because there's so much to do. It's a madhouse. Wow. So, guys, I just dropped the link into uh, the chat. You can see it there on the screen. If you have questions about South by Southwest or you have maybe a good story, feel free to come into the lobby and we can bring you in and you can actually ask Brian yourself or share uh, a, a tidbit or a story or a tip, a piece of advice, something uh, related to South by Southwest. West, we would love to hear it. So just check that out. It's in the comments, uh, and you can just click that link. It starts with uh, BeLive.tv. Maybe it starts with HTTPS colon slash slash BeLive.tv, but that's the link if you'd like to come into the lobby, and then I can bring you up, and you can join us and ask your question. Welcome, Eduardo. Great to see you. He says, Ross is a must. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's really nice of you. Uh, Eduardo is awesome. I uh, got a chance to meet him in person at Summit Live, and then he came all the way from Mexico for his birthday at Mario Armstrong's Never Settled Show. So nice. I got to see him again there. Great to see you here as well, Eduardo. We're talking with uh, Brian Wallace, and Brian runs Now Sourcing. Uh, you can find it at nowsourcing.com, at nowsourcing on Twitter and social media. And let's let's turn to your company a little bit because uh, you're, you're kind of on the cutting edge of, of infographics, and people think of infographics as something that fill a, a, a Pinterest <laughs> post or, you know, uh, supporting material within a blog post and things like that. But you're really a, kind of on the cutting edge of making them interactive and, and doing some different things with them that most people might not be aware of. Um, tell us what's going on with in infographics and kind of where that, that genre is going. Sure. So before we get into all the cutting edge, let's do a little history, because okay. I think a lot of people, when they hear the word infographic, depending on who you are, if you're in social a lot, you're like, oh, not another infographic. I hate <laughs> these things. And it's like, I assure you, no, not those. We don't do those. We do the good things. So uh, like I said, my wife and I actually started this business 12 years ago, and my background's in technology. I kind of was tired of working for other people and was a CTO, kind of went in one day and just told the founders of the company, hey, I want to kind of do my own thing. Can you please be my client? They said yes. And from then I started my own more IT consulting and websites. And around 2006, we started getting into social right at the dawn of it when it was exploding. And it was amazing because back then nobody knew what they were doing and it was just the wild west and so much alchemy. I would tell companies, you got to have a Twitter, you got to have a Facebook page. And they would like laugh me out of their offices and call me back in two years and stuff like <laughs> that. It was, it was just insane and a really fun time. And I would say South by Southwest is actually a credit for a lot of that social media revolution. Twitter really became a thing in 2007 there. So I noticed that, you know, social is so big, right? Like, what are we doing right now? We're live streaming. So there's one group of people who are live streaming experts. And then you have Instagram people. And then within the Instagram people, you have Instagram people for famous cats, right? I mean, like in every direction, there's like endless things. There's the email marketing people. There's the conversion rate optimization people, Facebook ads people. I can go on and on. So I started getting towards the end of the 2000s, just so many requests in every direction. I'm like, dude, I can't do all this stuff. And we're never going to be able to keep our edge. So eventually we just kind of had a meeting in the minds and it's like, all right, what are we good at? We're great at viral content, how to really move people, get inside the mind of what makes people think, help them make better decisions, storytelling, visual arts, crashing servers, like back in the day, like when you had dig.com and 100 people ran 50% of the homepage. I was one of those guys, right? So like we knew all these different things to do. So I'm like, all right, what's the thing that we could kind of combine all these things? So around 2008, I look around, there's like a handful of people doing infographics and they're all like not really that great looking. And, you know, you go to the bottom, there's no sources. Like, didn't we all learn that in elementary school to like write book reports and stuff? Or it'd be like cite Wikipedia. And it's like, really? Like where on Wikipedia? I don't know. So there were like, typos and like, it was just like little like blog listicles. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I'm looking into my crystal ball and I'm like, everybody's going to love this kind of visual communication. And every, and the industry is just so immature. So we helped 
we weren't the only ones doing it, but we helped really legitimize it into an industry. So not just like do it yourself stuff, like you don't build your own house and your own car. We do everything from coming up with the concept, doing all the research and storytelling. We do all the design, we implement it because people suck at implementing it and then we promote it. So, I mean, you've probably seen that influencer thing that we have that's been on Mashable, it's been on Inc. Magazine, it was in Entrepreneur. I mean, it's all over the web. It'll probably be in a hundred different publications by the time we're done getting all that stuff on there. Uh, infographics rocks. Uh, yes, absolutely. Very well said in a single view. So like a picture is worth a thousand words or we could just summarize it in that one sentence there. Right. So um, laughter yoga. That's awesome. Yes. I, I actually know a little bit about laughter <laughs> yoga, but we could talk about that later. So Elaine's going to be there. Really? Ooh. I think. Hey, one off the wall, stress busting yoga, laugh. Yeah, you should definitely have a laughter yoga self-promotion. Self -promotion. Self -promotion. And <laughs> Elaine mentioned that her son also, um, a UX designer was a presenter on a panel about Agile in 2013. Awesome. Do you have a favorite, um, a, a, a sort of a favorite panel or favorite speaking gig that you did related to infographics, either at South by Southwest or somewhere where you just mm -hmm. felt like, okay, this is really connecting with people and they're, they're getting it. When you were done, you're like, they're getting where we're going with this. Sure. So I would say not at South by Southwest, but probably my favorite speaking event was a couple years ago when I was out in the Valley. I was at a content marketing summit at LinkedIn. That was a lot of fun because first off, I love LinkedIn and it was really cool to like meet a lot of the guys and be presenting right there. They have like a whole area to do it. And I don't know, I just thought that we gave a lot of kinds of content marketing examples that really struck gold out there. So I thought that that was a lot of fun. I had like this funny story about like right. needing, I like, I had like one dress shirt for the event and it was like a cufflink shirt and I didn't have cufflinks and I had to run around. It was like this whole crazy thing. So like the first thing, first five minutes was like a cufflinks monologue and it was kind of funny. I'll, I'll throw that in later. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, but I mean, I think in terms of South by Southwest, it varies so much every year. I would have to honestly look at the roster to tell you what to even look out for. But in terms of venue, I will give a shout out to a specific lounge that I love that uh, I think it's, it's a, in its 11th year. So um, it is the TechSet Blogger Lounge that is sponsored by Comcast this year. I love that place specifically. It sounds funny. It's like, why are you even talking about a lounge? So remember, the little things are a tremendous advantage when it comes to South by Southwest. So right. on your broadcast, I'm going to give away the best tip of the whole thing. Okay. If you go to this lounge, it's like this. Remember, I told you, Wi-Fi is crap, right? Sometimes it crashes or nothing works, and you're not going to find a hard wire. But in this lounge, all you have to do is have a badge. And then there's chairs, there's tables, you can plug all in your equipment, you can hardwire internet, there's coffee, there's food, there's a wonderful stage for taking pictures and they always have great speakers there. So for those reasons, you've got to add that. You, you should, like the first day you're there, just register. It's a great place to crash, it's a great place to meet up. And it's like my home away from home when I'm there. <clears throat> How's mobile connection? Like if say you're not using Wi-Fi and you, you need to use uh, mobile, perhaps you might be doing some live streaming while you're there. You're dead. <laughs> it, it's not going to be too good, right? It's, it's going to be a it lot varies. of it, yeah, yeah, it's going to depend where you are, right? So, I mean, if you're right in the convention center, very rarely will you ever have a swarm of such heavy users because imagine – what if you had like 500 people live streaming their own things at the same spot or even more than that, right? right. So it's kind of madness. You might wanna just record stuff and do it later. I know a lot of us will actually default to text messages instead of going through fancier versions of connecting with people or WhatsApp or whatever, or GroupMe. Uh, I feel like a lot of people kind of go a little bit more analog. People travel in packs. I mean, right. we're not talking about going into a wasteland here. It's not survivalism <laughs> or anything. I mean, like we all can't live five minutes without our Wi-Fi, but just be mindful that it's not always gonna be perfect. We're you may run into issues, especially when people are like Snapchatting each other. There's tons of stuff going up and down the wire. Well, that's it. I think micro content is kind of the answer, right? You, yes. you do Snapchat, you do an Instagram story and quickly talk about what's going on. And of course, Twitter is really where it goes down, right? I mean, because that's where you can yeah. share in 140 characters uh, quickly messages. You can hashtag it. People can go look and see what's going on. Um, I think even probably for things that are developing outside the conference, you want to stay on top of following the hashtags on, on Twitter, right? 
Absolutely. Twitter's great. Facebook's great. A lot of people are Instagram people. I know a lot of people Snapchat like crazy there. So I think those are really the places to do it. Like I said, I kind of love LinkedIn. So I also throw that on there. I know uh, some people are getting into Anchor. So basically any platform that you can imagine, you're like, oh, wow, there's this new platform. And it's like you're talking to the founder or somebody who can also tell right. you like 20 other things. It's amazing. Like everybody that you're even flying in and out with are all going to it. A lot of cities even have meetups before. There should be a New York one. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's a big deal. So uh, tomorrow morning, I just tell everybody, tomorrow morning, uh, Coach Jenny, uh, myself, Karen Graves, and Monique Johnson will be doing uh, a live stream at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, each day uh, for, the, for the three weeks of voting, we're doing uh, – one piece of content each weekday. Awesome. So we're doing 15 pieces of content for uh, 15 weekdays and Monday through Thursday, we go solo live and then uh, Friday we get together as a group. So if you're interested in seeing how we all interact and learning a little bit about our, our topic, it's uh, Facebook live, build your tribe and actually make money. Uh, do join us tomorrow. I'll, have once we're all set up i'll have you can find it either on the live stream universe facebook page you can find it on my personal profile and if you haven't had a chance to vote for us please do go to livestreamuniverse.com slash sxsw that will redirect you to our page you can vote leave a comment uh we really appreciate all the support we've received so far and I mean, I cannot believe that it's almost like a week into this. And I mean, it's just been the coolest thing to think about possibility. I mean, I, I don't know whether we're going to get it or not, but I'm going to be so, right. so I'm either going to be like the happiest person in the world or the most <laughs> disappointed person in the world uh, whenever they decide. And they don't really reveal when when. Uh, thank you, Elaine. Elaine says she will do. And um, Michael Campbell says, great to see you, too, Eduardo. My friend, you are awesome. Uh, yes, it's so great to see how this community has come together as, as well. I feel like there's so much support for people who are, are going for uh, South by Southwest. But like I was saying, they don't really tell you exactly when the decision is going to be made. Like some no. conferences tell yeah. you. What, 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 why do they do that? Or what can we expect from that? They, they're just sadists, I guess. I don't know. They just, they want to watch us squirm. No, that's not true. Think about it like this. So it's so competitive. If I had to guess, I think we are probably going to get somewhere between five to 6,000 panels from all over the world being submitted. And if, again, this is estimation. You include individual submitted. speakers as part of the, pa all part of the panel. Submissions. Right. Yeah, submissions. Okay. Right. So, so panel picker submissions. Wow. I would say easily 5,000, probably closer to 6,000. And again, as an estimation, I'm basing this on some numbers from past years. So I, I obviously, I like, I'm not an official for South by Southwest. So if anybody's watching me, I, I don't know like secrets or whatever, right. but I'm going to estimate, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say there's going to be between five to 6,000 submissions and probably 10% will get in. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if you think about how much work, that's why they're not revealing how quickly, right? They have to go through thousands of these things and look at everything and watch all the social interactions. I mean, it's so much work, right? There's, right, right. It's not just, oh, let's just vote the same people in over and over again, or they have to be famous. They want to see things that are truly interesting for our times that will score well with the crowds because – People are paying good money to get into these things, and this is one of the best conferences in the world, so they have a reputation to uphold. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a few months before they make their decisions. I'm trying to remember in past years, I think I heard back in, like, October or something like that, and mm -hmm. then I think they even go through a couple rounds of when they do it. So there might be, like, the first round. I know, I know. I, <laughs> this isn't wow. making it easier for you. But yeah, you, you just kind of have to suffer for a little while. Just do your part, getting it out there. I mean, you're doing all the right things. I think that it's, you know, you guys have done a lot of work already. You really plan methodically about what you're doing. Live streaming super hot. Lots of people don't know how to do it. You guys do right. know how to do it. So it's not rocket science there <laughs> in terms right, of right. it. And I think, yeah, just continuing to rally the audience for the next couple of weeks, I think is the smartest thing you could do. I think that's really awesome.
I like what Elaine says. You you do what you can do. You do the best you can, and then you you kind of release yeah. your attachment from the right. outcome. Like everything whatever, in life, just whatever let go. happens, right? Totally. And totally. I I mean it, it's just it's just such a fun thing to think about because I I've never been to the conference, but I followed I followed it on on Twitter. I followed. Uh, some of your shows, uh, you did some huge shows on Blab. You had Robert Scoble on, I think. Yep. You had some other well-known people on and really got like almost unseen number of people. Um, you, you had one show, you had like over 3,000 people watching, right? Oh, easily, yeah. So this is a topic that people are fascinated by in a conference that has reach, obviously having you know well-known guests helps, right. but... But other people Absolutely. have had Scoville on and they've had 100 people watching or whatever. So the topic right. certainly resonates with with a lot of people um, now. So for you going, you, you've spoken there how many times now? So let's see. I spoke. Um, I think four. Yeah, four years, three years officially last year. I wasn't going to do it officially. And then even in like specific years, there were a couple times where I spoke like three or four times during the event and all sorts of different things. I can get everybody notes to stuff later if you want, but I've done a lot of mentor sessions. I've done some panels, done some panels for clients. I've done um, just some announcement type things and lounges. Like when we, it was actually in 2016, we did the virtual reality infographic. Um, there I spoke a couple different times. Um, I've spoken at pitch stages at South by Southwest. So South by has tons of different kinds of venues that aren't just from the panel picker also. So just keep in mind with that. So, so never, never are you saying there's other opportunities if you if I were to go anyway that yep. I could find maybe other opportunities to speak and participate and absolutely yeah yeah they're not always so obvious and they come through all sorts of different ways so definitely you know get keyed in with people in the know be very uh, vigilant and diligent on just doing your homework keeping up on all this because it's going to be madness you'll see i mean it's only august right we're talking right. about march here <laughs> right and if you want to and if you want to support brian you can go to the panel you can go to south by southwest.com look up uh there'll be a big link to panel picker and you can just search by his name you could search by what else can how how else can people find you if they want to vote for you? Yeah, if you go into the I think it's panelpicker.southbysouthwest.com, there is a search option on the top nav. And if you just type in Brian Wallace or now sourcing, you'll see my panel, which talks about EQ, like emotional intelligence over right. IQ, which is kind of how to be like the most interesting and resourceful person in the room. And I've, you know, for a dozen years been a real super connector. I know how to I get to the point and make points of intersection, which is the whole point of our group and all of that. So I think a lot of people can value that kind of knowledge. I talk to a lot of people who are just afraid to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing is like this. People are like, oh, man, I'm just not a good networker. I'm like, right, right. because you think that the job is to hand out all the business cards as fast as possible. No, you're a good networker for <laughs> saying that. <laughs> so people sometimes have the wrong idea. Yeah. Right. So uh, head on over there and vote for Brian as well. Thanks, He's man. done so much to uh, make the event known uh, in the online community and live stream community. He's done so much to help people uh, and, and let them know the process and, and all that. And he's, an awesome speaker as well. So definitely do support Brian. And again, if you want to just look up his name, you can, he's going to come up. Um, they do make it very search friendly. When will they make it mobile friendly? Never. <laughs> I mean, the biggest tech conference in the world or whatever. Don't get me started. I can't yeah, I mean, get on from uh, a mobile device. I, I can't even. Yeah. They've tried to make the app. There's a couple different apps so there's Panel Picker, there's the South by Southwest Social, and then there's just the South by Southwest app. Mm -hmm. And then there's even another app if you have a trade show booth for lead retrieval. I mean, there's there's so much stuff to cover, man. I don't know. I don't want to go down all sorts yeah, of yeah, articles. Yeah, yeah. So you can just stop <laughs> me at any point because there's there's a lot to cover Let there. Let me bring yeah. in a question from Eduardo. He mentions yeah. VR infographics. Can you please elaborate more? Yes, absolutely. So. When we make infographics, we don't just make pretty pictures to hang up in a museum. We make pretty pictures to make people money. 
So we're getting people lots of press exposure. We've gotten people funded. We've gotten people acquired. We've helped people with all sorts of leads and sales and increase in SEO and all these kinds of things. So right now, static two-dimensional infographics work really well. So like that influencer one I was telling you about and all sorts of different ones. Like we just had one uh, about breastfeeding that's running all over the internet. So we know how to get your message seen and heard and not just like a super small amount of people, but just huge amounts of people also from all sorts of different kinds of clusters of interest. So eventually we're going to get to the point where technology will be better. So I've been around a little while now, so I have the you know business experience even before I started this company a dozen years ago. So I have basically like 20 years of experience under my belt and it's everything web. So in the first dot-com boom and bust, I was already working in that. And I remember reading, uh, there's a great guy called Michael Moe out in the, the Valley. He publishes like a weekly newsletter thing called A to Apple. And I don't remember when it was exactly. We'll have to search in the archives. We should find it for the, the group. But he basically talks about how all the stuff that works now in the sharing economy, everybody was starting all that crap in 1999. So what happened? Like, why did it all die? Right? Like all the stuff where you have like click list and all the stuff where everybody shops for you from the grocery store, that stuff existed forever ago. That was, that stuff's almost 20 years old. So the thing that he talks about is bandwidth. So back in 1999, seven single digits percent of the United States had broadband. And when I say broadband internet, I mean like one get, you know, one megabit a second, like wouldn't even be able to stream Netflix. So you couldn't do anything with a pipeline like that. So right now, because the internet still is not great compared to the rest of the world, right? So if you're in a remote area, forget it. Like you're not even getting broadband a lot of the time or no internet. There's a lot of places throughout the United States where you might have one choice or two choices. I'd say the majority of our listening audience probably has under 50 megs for their streaming, right? So you run into buffering problems, you have a shared pipe, not to get so t super technical with everybody, but the internet, especially on mobile and tablet and not getting Wi-Fi all the time can be extremely limited. So mm -hmm. when you don't have all the five senses that you can integrate into a fully immersive experience, like virtual reality is going to be, like everybody who's obsessed with the book and soon to be movie by Spielberg, Ready right, Player right. One, that's coming out at the end of March, I believe. There's just so much you can do through the pipe because you need a super computer and you need a super goofy looking headset and all that kind of stuff. But that's where content is going. Content is going that we're no longer gonna have to sit at a typewriter and a TV fused together called a computer we're gonna be wearing it, or it's gonna be in contact lenses, and it's gonna be in haptic gloves, and there's gonna be binaural audio, and there's gonna be all these fancy things that are incredible. And we're going to have to serve content into this whole immersive world. So that's what we started pioneering uh, a year and a half ago, but the world wasn't ready, so we kind of pulled back and we're like, you know what, we're gonna kind of just do what we're doing until the world is there. I'm actually more excited about augmented, where it's basically like overlaid on the world around you. So that's right. what I'm talking about there. And for those of you who've ever seen The Wizard of Oz, the movie, right? Super old school movie. A lot right. of us weren't even born yet. What was the thing that happened in The Wizard of Oz? Color. They didn't make a big deal of it. It's just, you know, tornado round and round. The house is going around. Dorothy goes up from Kansas and crash lands on the witch. Spoiler alert. Whatever. Decades ago. <laughs> you ruined <laughs> it. Yeah, me. I ruined it. Sorry. Sorry. just ruined the internet. So lands in Oz into like on the way to Emerald City and the you know the gold yellow brick road all that and it's all magically in color there right, and yeah. that I think is like a really good analogy to what the world of vi virtual and augmented reality is for those of you who haven't tried on all these headsets and done all these different things and interacted in it it is amazing it's so much better than just sitting there typing and all this stuff is happening I just saw something, um, I forget who put it out there, but somebody said they're attaching like a, a neural way to control virtual reality. Uh, there's some guys who make augmented reality stuff called Meta. Uh, about a year ago, they said they're throwing away all their computer monitors and they're only gonna have holographic monitors in space that you can see throughout the augmented reality headset. Bloomberg just did a story on it, which I could also link to later. So wow. you've got all this stuff that's coming that's gonna be amazing. And that's where I wanna put our content into a much more immersive world. Answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> I think you gave more than anybody could have right. expected or hoped for. That that's awesome. Um, thanks everybody for the shares too. We have fifteen shares, so I awesome. I, I really appreciate thanks, that everybody. It's awesome having Brian Wallace here from Now Sourcing. You can find his company NowSourcing.com at NowSourcing 
on social. Of course, vote for him at South by Southwest or panelpicker.southbysouthwest.com. Panelpicker.southbysouthwest. S-X-S-W. Not easy to say, kind of a tongue twister, but it's... I say South by Southwest. Yeah. I always am so worried about getting that wrong. <laughs> yeah, Wardo says thanks uh, for that yeah. detailed answer. Um, and so vote for Brian while you're over there. Just look him and up Ross. in the search, and you can find us. Uh, you can look up my name, but it's probably easier to just go to livestreamuniverse.com slash South by Southwest. But it's SXSW, livestreamuniverse.com slash SXSW to vote for myself, Coach Jenny. Uh, Monique Johnson and Karen Graves. Tomorrow you can watch all of us 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll have links to that later, but you can watch that. You can watch all of us 10 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> Chemistry, how we re interact, and all that kind of stuff tomorrow. So, um, in the time we have left, like, you know, you and I had a, a very interesting discussion when we met in, in, in New York City. We talked about different social platforms and how to use them. We talked a little bit about live streaming. Where does live streaming fit in this mix as, as things move towards uh, AR and VR and wearable devices and things like that? Will live streaming be an important part of that or will oh, yeah. that leap over live streaming and live streaming will be one of those things of the past like the cell phone and <laughs> right so it's a wonderful question ross i'm glad you brought it up so it's not competing technology so it you wouldn't say live streaming versus my laptop virtual reality and augmented reality will replace the way you work because right now we're basically working on a not as crappy version of the 1983 macintosh right? Like the Apple II or whatever. I had an Apple IIc when I was a little kid. I did right? too. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. Remember, it's the first portable because it had a handle on the back and you like bring the whole computer, <laughs> whatever. It's insane. So like it's going, so live streaming is wonderful because it's in the moment. It's authentic. There's heart there. You know, it's, it's rough cut. We're not sitting here in a makeup studio and all right. sorts of stuff. You've got like a Whole Foods bag in the background and you're in like a room. Like that's cool. Like oh, it I doesn't have to move that. No, no, but don't. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. That's good. Right. Cause like it's not product placement. You're just like, right. whatever. Like I shopped at Whole Foods and like and I'm pay for it. They don't care. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if Whole Foods is listening or Amazon or whoever the heck's making the decisions, Ross <laughs> Brands live stream universe. No, no. So, okay. So Thank you. people are going to, for sure, people are going to want this kind of communication, whether it's one-on-one -on -one business communication. Like I have meetings like this sometimes, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's more fun to just open up the meeting, take off the walls and have the world watch it and call it a show. Right. right. So I think people love the unexpected. I know our friend Kathy, you know, loves all, you know, just doing stuff off the cuff and bringing in humor and comedy and all right. of that that's wonderful so i think it's not going away at all i think it's just the way that we interact with computers is changing so there's a study that's called there's a actually a field of study called hci human computer interaction where they take neuroscientists and computer science people and ergonomics people and philosophers and they just like put mm -hmm. them in a room and like nobody can leave until we make better computers and stuff right so right. we're finally getting hopefully finally getting there where we can have better immersive experiences so instead of all this goofy crap where i have to have a laptop a desktop a, a mobile device a tablet come on like how much junk do i need and a watch and all of this, right? There eventually will be a singularity of devices where we're not gonna need all that different stuff. So with all of the holography and stuff that we are gonna be able to do in augmented, what if I could just broadcast, you know, a giant screen, however size I want on my wall? I'm pointing to a, a brick wall over here. Just right. so <laughs> crazy. Okay, good. <laughs> no, we're back. Yep. But I, I mean, I, I've been, at home, you know, at work, yeah. I've used desktops, obviously, but at home, I've always, I, since the mid 90s, I've been a laptop person, right? Uh -huh. Since like 1997, 1998, something like that, I got a laptop and I've been all laptop. And now I'm realizing if I want to do more things for live streaming where I have more control, right? Even an i7 laptop, MacBook Pro, 
isn't good enough for everything I want to do. And I'm actually thinking like, do I have to get a desktop? And I, I really don't want to spend money on a desktop. I don't want to find a place to put a desktop, right. although they are fairly portable now and thin and everything else. Right. But I just like working on a laptop. I like the flexibility of being able to unplug a few things and take it with me and, and always have it, you know? I um, um, and, and I just find it's comfortable. It's like the, the right side. It's, it's like perfect, right? To me, it's right. perfect, right? And so I've, I've been all about laptops for years, or for, you know, too many years, 20 years, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> not to date myself too much. But um, I'm finding that they're not necessarily robust enough if you want to do some things like use Wirecast, bring in a guest of your own, um, record at the same time, uh, do things like that. Um, it, it, it starts really pushing the CPUs up, even on like, a, like I say, an i7 MacBook Pro that's uh, about a year and a half old. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do anything with like AutoCAD or graphic design or music composition or podcasting, video streaming, live streaming, and forget about it when we start getting into, yeah, Carnegie Mellon's changed the world in ways that a yeah. lot of people don't realize. Like all the CAPTCHA stuff comes from there. We could go down that road for a whole, <laughs> Elaine and I have to hang out apparently because we got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, but yeah. Hopefully I mean, South by Southwest, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you see the rig, forget about laptops, the desktop powerhouse computers that you need to properly run, you know, Oculus, HTC Vive, all these fancy things. That's why we're not totally there yet, right? I mean, computers continue to get better and the processors get better and the RAM gets better and more portable and transferable and all that. But that's why this stuff is taking so long, right? Because you're not just sitting there with a little screen. Now you have to count, account for the way people hear things. Like you might have heard me say about binaural audio. Right. Binaural audio means that you hear things differently. Like they take a human head mannequin with ears, and the sound passes through and around it, so you have a better right. experience. There's haptic feedback where you can touch things in the world. Mm -hmm. So there are people that are working on gloves that are sensory and shoes and outfits. And I mean, it's we're years away from doing all this stuff right, but a lot of this stuff is coming. A lot of this stuff is coming through film. A lot of this stuff is coming through gaming. I guess a lot of this stuff is coming through porn, whatever. I mean, they're always pushing the internet. But yeah. So so as this these new technologies come in, obviously yeah. in the beginning the demand that they have on bandwidth, the demand they have on CPU and all that is going to be much beyond what the things that we're doing now are demanding. So do you think like if, if somebody invests in like a desktop, that's, you know, a really good one or whatever, that five, six years from now, whatever, having that desktop will help them or will it be obsolete because you'll need a machine that's designed to handle all these new things, right? Everything's automatically obsolete right away, but I'm not so much an Apple fanboy. I mean, I know you saw this, but I'm actually on a PC laptop. I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm old school. I know where all my shortcuts are, whatever, right, right. but like, I don't know, maybe eventually they'll win me over. But I know like in the, the latest developer conference, when they're announcing the new Macs, they said it's all going to be virtual reality ready which I thought was ex extremely interesting. So is that the, the iMacs that are out already, or is that that I iMac Pro that they're coming out with? I didn't watch. Yeah, I don't remember when they said it's coming out. I don't think it's the one that's out yet. I think it's about to be out. And anybody, feel free to correct. Like I said, I'm not the, <laughs> the bleeding edge Apple fanboy guy. But that's what I'm saying. As Because... Remember all the devices that we just said? So we have like this wheelbarrow full of all our tech crap. And now right. I have to go buy another rig for augmented and virtual. I mean, come on, right? Like my computer should handle all that stuff. That's why things like Google Cardboard are good. So you don't have to spend a fortune. You could just go to Walmart and spend right, like right. 10 bucks and have some crappy uh, little experience. Yeah, the, the new Mac is going to be VR ready. Uh, Google Daydream is quite nice. Uh, Gear VR is kind of cool. It's built on the Oculus Backbone when the Samsung thing doesn't blow up, whatever. So there's a bunch of stuff that's coming out that's pretty good. So since you're a PC guy, are there any yeah. PCs that are uh, um, going to be VR ready soon? Or I don't know if I would say like PCs or, I mean, it's more, it's almost like, just imagine like buying like a gaming PC. That's basically right. what you need to do. You're buying stuff that's like game level quality to really do this stuff and really blow it out. So you need some real high level specs, depending on what you're trying to do. To wow. build all the stuff and consume all this stuff. 
Well, this has been an awesome hour. I can't believe it's 8 o'clock already. Thank you so much, Brian Wallace, for joining us. Uh, check out Brian's website, nowsourcing.com, his infographic company. You can find him on social, uh, particularly on Twitter. He's active, at nowsourcing. It's on LinkedIn and across social media. And do vote for him for South by Southwest. Go to panelpicker.southbysouthwest.com. Look up Brian and vote for him. And vote for my group, too, uh, shameless self-promotion here, livestreamuniverse.com slash SXSW. And thanks, everybody, so much for joining us. We will be back on Monday night with uh, another episode of Livestream Stars, Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Jeff Adams will be the guest, host of the Jeff Adams Show, host on Be Live. TV, talk about the latest things going on with the platform and also what he's working on, uh, both on the radio and live streaming side. And thanks, everybody, again, for joining us, for sharing this out. Thanks, Eduardo, Brad. Good to see you. Um, I'm glad you were able to make it for a little bit. Elaine, thank you. Juan, uh, Marietta, um, Michael Campbell, just everybody. I really appreciate it. Amanda Fernando. Um, Jay Garrett was here. Travis was here. Um, I know other people were here who didn't throw anything in the chat, but I really appreciate everybody. And we will see you soon. Have a great night, everybody.